Well, like you mentioned, 10 municipalities in KwaZulu-Natal under administration for a number of issues, including mainly uh, the failure to investigate and hold to account irregular expenditure within those municipalities, as well as the failure to provide services to residents uh, that essentially live in those regions. Among those 10 municipalities is the Umsunduzi municipality that is in Peter Maritzburg. The, um, in that municipality, we have seen there a number of service delivery issues, including most recently uh, electricity outages that have lasted for up to three weeks in some areas, as well as a water crisis in those areas. The, uh, uh, the Utukela district municipality, where we've seen a number of vacant posts within senior management within that municipality, the Ngosi Langalibalele local municipality, the Umzinyati municipality, where there has been more than 200 million rand of irregular expenditure as of last year uh, an extensively high number within that municipality that is still being investigated the Emadlangeni local municipality Utu, Umkanya Kude, Umtuba Tuba among those basically um, various regions in KwaZulu-Natal mostly the northwestern regions where we saw a municipality is being placed under administration. The intervention needed at this time, meaning that there will be administrating officials that will be presiding over essentially the financial books of these municipalities to investigate what is happening there and possibly then try and reset uh, the municipality's budget in terms of expenditure. This has been a major issue in this province. We are one of the provinces with the highest number of municipalities that remain under administration. For example, the Msunduzi municipality had been placed under administration in 2019, and as of today, they're still battling with financial crisis within that municipality, leaving many residents, of course, feeling the impact of this. Uh, just earlier this week, we spoke to residents who had still been without electricity there because of uh, failure to uh, maintain infrastructure, or at least that is the allegation from the residents, they say, and all of this ultimately leading to uh, the need for uh, external officials from the Corporative Governance Department to enter that municipality and try and understand what is happening with regards to the use of finances to ultimately assist where the municipality needs to be assisting uh, residents. So that meeting, or rather today's meeting, uh, is with the COCTA MEC, Sipo the HOD of the department, as well as the administrators and officials of those municipalities that are currently under intervention, according to Section 319. Um, and, and what is happening there is a discussion about what further assistance need to be given to these municipalities. One very interesting aspect is that uh, among the discussions was what financial assistance needs to be given to these municipalities and what has not been made clear yet by COCTA. We do expect this information to come by tomorrow once the meeting has concluded is uh, what this is essentially costing the COCTA department, uh, what the intervention uh, to these 10 municipalities is costing the COCTA department and for how long they actually have a budget to sustain this. At the core of this, though, of course, is investigations that need to take place with regards to why we are seeing such extensive allegations of irregular expenditure. Uh, at the opening address of his, uh, of, at, at his opening address, the COCTA MEC today uh, actually referred to one incident where he said a municipal manager of one municipality, he did not provide the name of which municipality this was, uh, once being granted a state vehicle, had come to Durban and went on uh, a number of days, he used the word gallivanting around Durban with state resources for a number of days. And this is one incident that he pointed out of municipal officials taking advantage of state resources for their own benefit. That is something that administrators need to investigate and hold to account. So, so this meeting is essentially just a, a start of the year update on where these municipalities are in terms of investigating this irregular expenditure or the failure currently to provide services to residents. Who should be held to account? Of course, this must also be uh, a discussion that needs to be held with the NPA, uh, but as well as what financial intervention is further needed to assist these municipalities. Uh, some of those municipalities that are not under administration includes the Etiquini municipality, where although it has not received financial assistance, we saw 
uh, a couple of years ago, the Kokta minister, Gosazana Dlamini Zuma, come here to caution municipal officials about their actions going forward, warn them against uh, uh, the, the use of state resources for their own benefit, theft within the municipality. We have seen these allegations with our previous Etikini mayor, those cases currently at the court, and of course a number of other issues where it ultimately those officials appointed uh, by uh, uh, appointed into the sphere of governance not actually taking on the task of being the servants to the people uh, that was what the uh, main highlights of this meeting today was it also continues now uh, behind closed doors with administrators again like i mentioned the financial aspects of this that is not uh, being discussed with the media as yet but at the core of this is really just calling on municipal officials to actually be the servants of the people and to refrain from indulging in using state resources for their own benefit and ultimately leading to fraud and corruption. Karinda Jake Mahan is out in KZN for us. Thank you so much for your time. Really just following that meeting that is taking place with the Cocta MEC um, around those municipalities that um, are under administration.